Welcome friends. Now in this session we will see determination how to determine a maximum grid current and ground potential rise. So both have both quantities are interrelating each other. So basically potential rise we have the formula uh, which is simple Ohm's law V is equal to I R where I is uh, maximum grid current and uh, r is basically the resistance ground resistance that we have already calculated so determination of maximum grid current so r we already have now in this section we, we are calculating basically the maximum grid current so the art for current i k1 entering the grid returns via different paths so the current which is entering um, the grid station returns from different parts such as parts of the earth current return to transform a neutral within the substation area according to IEEE 82000 chapter 15.8 so parts of earth current return to transform a neutral area uh, it means transform a neutral it become a point uh, where earth fall current is flowing back so next point is due to inductive coupling part of the earth current written via earth wires or cable sheet to its source uh, according to IEEE 82000 chapter 15.6 due to inductive coupling parts of earth current returning via earth wires or cable sheet to its source so the earth current through sheet it can also return back to the source so sheet is an another point of the uh, returning uh, earth fault current part of earth fault current flows via earthing impedance uh, which are in parallel to considered grid so portion of the earth fault will flow through different earthing impedances which could be the towers nearby which could be as we have seen the pipes for the watering system uh, pipes for the firefighting system going through the ground which could be the foundations of the building which also uh, act as a written path the remaining parts flows uh, between the earthing system the remaining part of the fault current will flow any portion of the fault current will flow through the system earthing system and remaining will flow to the parallel paths of the substation and surrounding earth it is important to assess the type of location of those uh, ground faults that are likely to produce the greatest flow of current between the grounding grid and the surrounding earth Hence, to the greatest rise in the pressure and lo largest local surface pressure gradient in the substation area. So, in this picture, you can see a conductor is laid down on the ground. This is a ground fault, and uh, you can see this is 40 kV of the conductor. The conductor voltage is 40 kV when it is uh, spring down to the earth then the ground, ground potential will be rise as we explained at the point of uh, connection it would be 40 kV you can see in this area it will be 40 kV after certain time it will be reducing to 30 kV and then 20 kV and then further 10 kV and further it will reduce so whenever there is a fault uh, at the point where fault current is flowing the source point the fault current when the potential rise will be maximum and away from this point the potential oil rise will be less so uh, you can see another example so this guy is uh, measuring the field wireless communication this is GPRS sensor current injected into the walk side ground so they are injecting a current here uh, to the ground and because uh, they are injecting huge current which is in kilo amperes for example it will increase the potential and you can see the potential rise will be in this shape so even the fault injection is here even at 20 feet 
there will be a slightest of potential so this is an example uh, of ground potential rise and uh, practically when any, any fault is there in the substation or the line the potential will rise in the shape of like a mountain uh, it is similar to mountain and which is very dangerous uh, for any person so uh, uh, we have explained that what is a ground potential rise and uh, what are the different turning paths uh, of ground potential rise uh, it could be uh, the transformer neutral it could be the you can see inductive coupling parts of earth current returning via earth wire or cable sheets whatever cable sheets are going earth wires inductive coupling everything then part of earth fault current flowing earth impedances which are parallel to consider so uh, one safety point of view uh, i will explain you one thing that there were two transformers and uh, one transformer was under maintenance and what they did they did not uh, open the neutral of the transformer which was under maintenance so there was a fault uh, on even 11 kv side it was 132 by 11 kv transformer so there was a fault one one of the uh, 11 kv outgoing feeder and the result was there was some current that flown through this spare uh, through the transformer which are under maintenance so, so they put the earthing which is you know the required uh, earth basically the HV and LV conductors and uh, even and the neutral was also connected so what they did the neutral uh, the, when the fault has to follow all the paths available all the parallel paths available in the network it will follow whatever that uh, earth wires, bonding cables, uh, grounded structures, grounded neutrals. So what it did, they were doing the maintenance and uh, there was a potential rise. The current flows through this transformer neutral that was under maintenance but even earth. So the current tries to flow through this and they were doing maintenance. It creates a voltage of several kVs and uh, luckily the person survived and but his stomach it was he was near to this was near to this uh, conductor to the neutral so uh, his stomach was uh, he, he got flash uh, on his stomach so somehow he survived so that's why it's very important uh, uh, that if you are doing maintenance on a substation and then on a transformer that you must isolate the neutral first before starting uh, maintaining a transformer and then you need to earth it so it doesn't mean if something is earth and it is also secure even the earth equipment or earth item can also lead to potential rise when there is a fault in the same way uh, the sheet the sheet also can have a potential rise so that's why it is always uh, important that for example you are working on a cable whose sheet is grounded only at one side it is might be at the remote end or local end it's not grounded and you want to do some maintenance and you think that it is already grounded at the other end and you can work on now this end which is uh, not grounded or it was grounded and you open the ground you want to do some connection tightening or you want to change the wire you cannot simply change it because when there will be a fault there will be huge current flowing through this and it will increase the sheath voltages and if somebody is touching this cable so this guy will have a shock so all the neutral or grounded parts if you want to do maintenance on it if you want to remove it or if you want to do some maintenance on equipment so it is necessary to do the in a proper way by approved methods otherwise it could be hazardous so uh, part of uh, okay so this was a little bit introduction of maximum uh, grid current 
so the remaining part flows between the earthing system of substation and surrounding earth it is important to assess the type of location of those ground faults that are likely to produce the greatest flow of current between the ground grid and the surrounding grid so hence the substation all the substation don't have the same level of ground fault current depending upon the location uh, the fault level uh, to the earth will be different because there are so many parallel paths it means there are so many combinations if conductor lay down on one area and lay down another another area the fault levels will be totally different so hence the greatest rise in the grid potential and largest local surface potential gradient in the substation so what is our job here is we have to find out in the substation in case of fault which area will be having a greatest uh, maximum grid current in the same area will be having the maximum ground potential so we we have to find out these areas in this ground fault current which is decisive for calculation of potential rise gpr touch and stir potential so if we have the value of maximum grid current maximum grid current is the current fault current then can that can occur on the substation or a grid at a specific point so you can consider as a maximum grid current is just like a hot spot monitoring of an equipment so when a designer design a motor for example uh, he already knows by the calculation so which part of the motor will be most heated so what it will what the designer will do it will monitor that part or it will design the complete machine based on that hot spot so in the same way we have to uh consider this we have to consider this maximum grid current we have to design the our grid based on this current so that our grid should be uh, safe to operate it is the ground fault current that is decisive for the calculation of potential rise touch and stir potential so the three parameters ground potential rise uh, that i have explained you a little bit i hope the concept will be clear and the touch and stir voltages the formula we have seen everything is now depending upon this parameter so let's see how to calculate the grid current this will be very interesting the grid current which is uh, decisive for calculation of touch and step voltages is uh, only a part of whole earth fault current the ratio between this grid current and earth fault current is described by the current division factor sf and this is according to ieee 82000 chapter 15.1 current division factor relating the magnitude of fault current to that of its portion flowing between the ground grid and surrounding ground the factor is normally computed by ieee standard 80 according to ieee 80 the grid current can be calculated as follows i grid is equal to sf which is current division factor into df and into ik1 so we have now three values ik k1 is the maximum fault current uh, sf is a current division factor and uh, what we have do we have calculated this uh, we have got this values from our software so and we have to put the values here to calculate uh, maximum ground grid current and we got the value is 44.10 kilo amperes so again uh, what is sf sf is the ratio between this grid current and the earth fault current is described by current division factor the ratio between grid current and earth fault current described by current division factor sf current division factor relating the magnitude of fault current to that of portion flowing between ground grid and surrounding grid this factor is normally computed by ieee standard 80 
so now we get the equation which is uh, ig we have calculated which is 44.1 kilo amperes